We are a group of ultimate players, coaches and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make Ultimate huge. We want our videos and live streams to be free to watch. We want to make stories that not only reach you, but also reach people outside the Ultimate community. Like and subscribe, let's be the best in the world. Become a member and fund our work to cover more events in the future and to bring more stories and live coverage to the eyes of the ultimate world and, and beyond. beyond. on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. Global Showcase, starting in Europe, made in Amsterdam. Ultiveek. Ultiveek.net. Welcome back to Burn Alti TV. I'm Stefan Rapazzo here with Hannah Pendlebury. 
It's finals day. We just sat through the first mixed semifinal, and now it is officially finals day. Kicking things off here in the open division for the championship of the Elite Invite. These two teams have now already done the qualification part. They are in and on their way to EUCF. Hannah, tell us a bit more about them. Well, we have two very talented squads here. Mooncatchers with the deeper roster, though, for sure. They've got an extra sort of near sheer line over their compatriots. Of course, Clapham missing a couple of their famous faces, but the younger players on their roster really rising. And actually, the elite invite working out fantastically for Clapham. These younger players are able to really show their teammates and their leadership exactly what they're capable of. Thus far, they've been shouting out uh, Josh Eels, nicknamed Salty and Charlie Butt, as players that have really stepped up to the hockey. Not their first seasons on Clapham, but uh, really just flourishing here under the conditions in Switzerland. In terms of the side for Moon, we haven't seen them as frequently, well, we certainly haven't seen them in the bracket here on this Pitch One live stream. They have struggled a little bit with their patience in their early games and certainly their sideline noise. But in the bracket, they got themselves a bit more put together, turned off those end zone, uh, end zone eyes as we see Pierre Alain Alain. Le Min, de la Mine, <laughs> with his knee on the floor. He won't be cleating up for this game. He's just going to focus on coaching Moon Catchers, who we had a bit of an interesting season last year. Obviously, were the darlings of Worlds and then had some curious happenings at the EUCF. But they will be there in Wrocław, Poland, for sure. Both these teams getting that free ticket to the championship finals in the postseason. Now it's for bragging rights and glory right here to take the trophy home, the elite invite. Mooncatchers, of course, coming off a great start to their season one in Bruges, Tom's tournament. We talked a little bit off the start of this tournament. The slight difference between the team we saw there and the team we see now. Either way, a hot contest on our hands. Clap them, Mooncatchers, Brussels, London. This one promises to be a banger. We hope you're excited. We hope to hear from you in the chat and a early thank you for being with us. And while you're with us, make sure, like, subscribe and become a patron. This one's underway. Finals day in the open division. Pull lands in and takes a long roll out the back with that wind behind it. Yeah, the windy conditions here cannot be denied. Certainly, I am a big fan of the pulls that you can take sort of really rolling those. Not sure that was the plan for that one to land all the way out of bounds, but certainly from static, the hardest throw of the day for the open division being asked of James Mead. He wasn't picture perfect in the semi-final, but didn't need to tell you what, who had a hecking game in the semi, Tom Abrams. Oh, didn't he ever. One of the best games I've seen him have as a veteran player. It must feel nice to still be shining in his Ongoing days, McHale comes under to kick off the possession. Meade goes across to McInerney. Playing in their end, some good early pressure out of the moon catchers, Meade gets again. Abrams gets the gainer to Knapp, the Canadian newly joined on this Clapham outfit. Ooh, that one just under to McInerney though. Now McHale. Stringing a few possessions together, looking tidy to start this game despite the pressure. Meade now, far sideline. Back to McHale, and he zips one taken high. McInerney fakes again around to Knapp. There's pressure, but not quite there. Well handled. McInerney. Gainer to Martin, and he sees McHale. Throw put to a great space for Connor. Meade takes a second guess, and that one gets away. Chance to break first point of the game after marching it just about there, about 10 meters away from the end zone before the turn. Bizarre scenes. I think something maybe whispered, wind whispered in the ear of James Meade, a rare misstep. Looked over his shoulder there. He definitely wasn't sure. Here comes the moon break line, Bon Tomp. With the disc, he goes deep, Demaray on the chase. Can he get there? Oh my goodness! Gets the trailing edge, 
and Moon on the board with a break to kick things off. Oh, Dan de Marais doing Dan de Marais things. What a huge play. A uh, lesser athlete, that would have been one only for the grass, but moon catchers know exactly what to do with the young Leuven man. Nice to see him representing alongside Jet Set at the spring invite a couple of weeks ago. Fantastic hosting for Leuven for their first event for the European season. But an error, a gift from Clapham. Hopefully there won't be too many of those given great closing speed to try and make the save there from Meads. Big powerful legs, but an easy rip. Bonton who was fantastic last season. A bit of a breakout year, really ascending and rising to the top of the European scene. And of course, Mooncatch is going to see plenty of their players out on the fields in Nottingham for the under-24s division worlds later this summer. The ham. Well, we're still all focused here. Bern, Switzerland, adjacent to Wankdorf Stadium the home of D Young Boys and D Young Boys Women Football Clubs. And this pitch exclusively for Ultimate. Getting it done, big break to start. They put their D line back out and Clapham will try and tidy up the miscue on the first go as Hillman goes to Knapp. Knapp zips a gainer to Bogan Carey. McHale gets the under, has a look for the deep and ops away. This time the connection between McHale and Meade works. Now to Hillman, far side, gets a big gainer, but does not get the hands to close. Does Abrams with the defense coming from Vanderbrook. Well, we know that the big vet players for Clapham have had to pull some serious double, triple, quadruple duty here on the field. So maybe Tom Abrams a little bit tired from Apple yesterday. Pinch to Orlovsky's. Back to Abelton, the two Latvians playing together on this line. Right now for Moon, inside break. That's got a lot of wind under it and taken away by McHale's second chance to hold on this point. Nap, Bogan Carey near sideline. He looks to center and then gets Martin coming up the line. Martin goes back to Hillman and wide around to Mead. Clap him, desperate to steady, and that one not giving him chances. Two hands on it, but by the time McHale's was, he was near the boundary line, and it falls away anyhow. Yeah, that was definitely not on Abrams. He's a big man coming out of Farmer College originally, but yep, not even able to be redeemed by the lengthy wingspan of Connor McHale on the sideline. Deles, Venet rather, and Demaray goes deep. That one is in the end zone. Another break on the board for the Moon Catchers. 2-0 early stages of this game. George Donay uh, with the goal for Moon and another break out of the blocks. I am shook, Stefan. Shook, I tell you. Shook indeed. This is what Clapham did to Bologna yesterday. They're now having a taste of what it feels like to go down early. 2 nothing. not exactly the same, but there's a timeout being called. Wise decision by Clapham. They've got to steady the ship before this one gets out of hand in the early stages. Yeah, although big shout out. We just saw there Conor McHale getting one back there. One for one, he and Dan De Marais watching those two young athletes match up against each other is very exciting. Hope to get plenty more of that. Treat for the eyes, that matchup. We'll take a very short break here. Don't you go anywhere. We'll be right back after these messages. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we're back from the timeout, early stages. Hannah, thoughts? So this is a mirror image of the semi-final. It's flip reverse it time. Clapham went up two to nothing over BFD La Fota in the semi that saw them into this final. They're currently facing a two point deficit, but a little bit of a different feeling because of course the moon catchers came out on defense. So that is two breaks for Clapham. Those now, what are we going to get next? Are we going to get trading or are we going to get a full response? But if Clapham don't hold him, it's going to be quite the mountain to climb because the momentum behind Moon is going to be huge. Let's see what they discussed at the break. Coming out with a horizontal looking set to start. Hillman gets an under. I do like the pull across from the D-line for Andy Ooh. Hillman to be on O. I like it too. Mikhail has to stretch the arm out of the socket nearly to keep that one alive. And now Mead. Back to McHale. Cat between the wrists there. Mead zips one to Hillman. Hillman has to work for the around. I think there was a foul, but unnecessary to call with the completion. Hillman high, taken by McHale. Near sideline, 15 meters out. Shot for goal, that one counts. Bleeding has been stopped. One on the board with a hold. Well, sometimes you need your D-line captain to get you an offensive hold. Great work from Andrew Hellman there. But that was a full seven player performance to put that one in the bank for Clapham Ultimate. Have to say, talking ahead of this game to Tom Abrams, he was saying that they were hoping for a little bit of a breeze. If you give Mooncatchers a still day to work with, we know they are very happy to throw creatively around. And, and sometimes that can unsaddle the defense. Obviously, we haven't seen Clapham really play any true defense. They haven't come out to start the point on defense until this moment in front of us now. But it can really change the way you play defense. I know Clapham are going to want to try and stick to their roles and their original game plan of trying to apply that pressure. But at the moment, that slightly softer, more containment offense, uh, sorry, defense of moon catchers is a, again, a con compare and contrast. Whereas Lafota try and really pressure the hand of space, try and take away the reset, try and shut down your backfield options, make you gasp for air upfield. But at the moment, Clapham are just having those personal errors and it's partly due to the gusting windy conditions. So we have plenty of wind in Britain. Brave pole reception there. I love to see it by Houtonen. And Mooncatchers is our first look at their O-line. De Luca. Inside break to Merrick. That one to Feller. And he gets Ben Yonkers in the backfield. Ref Yonkers, that's a Yonkers to Yonkers connection. Now Merrick, Ref Yonkers wound up, put away the backhand. Feller. To De Luca, the Italian import. He gets a nice backhand out, suspiciously open was Merrick. Yeah, I think that's a uh, push off foul called by Tom Davis. Good pressure thus far by the Clapham defense. DeLuca puts one out to Yonkers, but on his hip. Ben Yonkers to his brother ref. The Yonkers trade disc possessions again. Well taken by Merrick to keep the possession alive. Ben Yonkers. Hootenin immediately crosses the pitch to ref Yonkers. Now Feller. Doorstep into Merrick, not quite for goal. Feller again. Feller looked to go wide, looks back to center. High arcing pass, Ref Yonkers is there. Another goal on the board for the Mooncatchers. 
Oh, Ref Yonkers just sneaking away from Charlie, but for Clapham on defense, it's all about the uh, matchups. But I think this one's going to be called back, so maybe there was again a little bit too much pushing in the mid middle of the field. Michelle Marek getting a little bit of chat. What a fantastic grab, by the way. Michelle Marek has been on fire for the Mooncatchers O-line. That is going to be called a goal, though, after a little bit of discussion, so it's going to stand. But yeah, this is, from a defensive perspective for Clapham, this is all about getting your matchups right and nullifying the power players, the key personnel for Moon. Tough to nullify, especially when every bit of the personnel is stepping up and making plays like Merrick just did there. A tough outfit to slow down. These Moon Catchers have been a team on the rise for the last couple of years. A team ready to mature and take the reins of championship consistency but it seems they are stepping into that spot of solidification they are they have arrived or at least they would they're, they're gonna hope to prove that by the end of this game a lot of shade gets thrown on the fact that you know some international players go to other clubs and play alongside them but i i for one am personally extremely happy that someone was able to uh, collect the latvian gold and put it out on the stage so frequently because it's you know not a nation that manages to afford to put that many teams out consistently in all the divisions at all the events i have this all the time for it pole came hot and heavy arcing into the ground probably put a heck of a dent into that end zone before it rolled out and abrams needs a golf cart to get out to that one <laughs> Well, a lot of Clapham are known for their uh, cross-training playing golf. They do have a bit of a grudge match, the old, old guard against Skogs of Sweden. They, yeah. they no longer play ultimate against each other. They now just go out on the golf course. It's all very refined and very British and very upper class. Well, upper middle class, not really upper class. They don't have titles. Well, Abrams getting closer to that infield cone let's see if he kicks it away or respects the rules here seems like he's left the cone in place good for you oh ho, ho, ho. nap gets the first pass under great duress then zips one across abrams back to nap and he gets to hillman underneath that's daniel hillman mikhail to nap. Mead gets two hands on it. McHale and him and De Demaray get their legs tangled up. McInerney there for the backup, but, uh, and I guess because of that, they probably don't need to discuss at length. Indeed, an accepted foul, I think. Uh, I think even Demaray might have called that himself. Mead. McInerney and Martin near sideline. Wide. Oh, and that came hot. And Abrams with an error. Well, it needs to come hot in this wind. But, yep, that's it. the second one. That's probably at the hands of Abrams. But he'll take responsibility. And he's such fine fettel. I'm sure he can play defense. Abel Dinch to Vandenbroek. Vandenbroek fakes first. They are meters away from breaking Abel Titch. Oh, and Bakemans can't hang on, and it gets smacked away. A glorious chance squandered. As Hoke, in fact. But this one sent deep. McHale on the chase. Demare covered it up well, and McHale didn't like how well it was covered up. Calls the foul. Well, even if we don't get a replay, I will watch that one back with great interest it seemed like there was a lot of hang time on Dan Demaray's defensive bid big ripper from Tom Abrams going back to what he is best known for that does look like oh. a good early bid I think probably Mikhail overcooked it another, definitely contact I think Mikhail's read he overcooked it a little bit he was a bit too far out in front it is difficult to throw the wind currently to actually tell you where it's coming from that was a throw against the wind that backhand that's blading down 
pushing there, so it would have been slowing comparative to a more still conditions. So it's coming diagonally across the pitch, far side to near side, slight left to right on it. So it's uh, a, a tricky one to read the disc in. But that did look like a fair battle, but that's just our opinion. Of course, the players on the pitch are the ones in charge. They make the plays, Demare and Mikhail still in-depth conversation. Yeah, I think we might get the whistle for uh, the time limit on the chat on this one. I wouldn't be mad for it to go back. Sounds like an appropriate logistical step. But no one is asked to see uh, any VAR. The players, of course, are allowed to watch the replay and make have input that's against the outcome being in favour of their team, as it were. So looks like that one is going to go back to Abrams. Abrams with the disc coming back into play after the call. He faked the notion of doing that again and put it away, waits for something new to develop. Gets Martin and gets it straight back. Daniel Hillman comes under and goes to Knapp. Knapp goes around, McInerney. Well-weighted, Meade takes it with a player on his back. Martin gets going through Knapp in the middle, playing out of their own end now, our Clapham. McInerney, but Vanderbrook makes that one look easy, the walk-through practically defense. Oh, well, he's got a lot of confidence as Gaten Vanderbrook calls himself a future uh, outdoor world champion in Limerick. Sorry, in Nottingham even, of course under 24 division. Abel Tinch picks up, centers to Demare. There was a pick somewhere in that stack because we see a lot of Arnold-like flexing out there. Love the hand signals, helps communicate with your teammates, but also for us in the booth. Demare awaits the tap in. Slow to develop, Abeltinch open, pick on the play. Abrams got caught up there on the cross. Yeah, absolutely unsurprised to see that. It happened a good couple of heartbeats before. It's just me a catch up though. Up and another violation before the tap in. Hearing the play calling, Cobra coming out of Clapham there. Abel Tinch. He throws an arc up. Mead sniffing at it, but no chance to steal. Abel Tinch again. Oh, and that one bounces out of the hands of Hoke. And another chance to hold. They need these holds playing from behind. One of our first long points of the game. Abrams to McHale. McHale straight back to Abrams. He's, put, he's gone deep. He's got Meade. Demare on the D. Demare gets in front and knocks it away. Having a heck of a game early is Dan Demare. Oh, he always has a heck of a game. I've not seen that lad put a foot wrong on a game that I've called with him on the field. He is but human. I'm sure he does make mistakes occasionally. Just just not under the hot, hot camera of the stream. But I shook my head when that came out of Tom Abrams. Not his nicest work, a bit too floaty. Not the best uh, connection downfield. Messmaker now. He's gone deep. Bon top is there. That is well weighted. That one counts and that is another break for the moon catchers. Well, another player from the Belgian Juniors development over the years. 
career highlight of beating Sokai, of course, last season at the World Indoor Championships and the first inaugural championship title at the Indoors European Division. But McInerney caught sleeping a little bit there on that one. You could see him sort of thinking that it wasn't going to go a little bit later in the stall count, but Sophie Bonton is not a player you can give that much acreage to. McInerney, of course, having started his playing career back at Middlebury College, so I'm sure uh, one of the exec producers at the WFDF will be keen to watch him develop. Of course, uh, if you get Tim Rockwood talking about the Middlebury College pranksters team, you can hear many, many facts that might stretch on for uh, several minutes of conversation. It may well. The Middlebury pranksters, the Wolf Duff media rep, Mr. Rockwood, might be watching, might have a keen eye on this one because of that. But uh, certainly the two North American imports this season, McInerney and Knapp for Clapham have been very impactful and certainly enjoying living in London. The two London teams, well, less less so these days we see Iceni at the European stage as the same dominance they used to be, but the, the two big teams used to get so many players, of course, because the Metropolitan City of London is a lovely place to work and live. Even from the pole reception, a little bit of miscommunication from Clapham. Not the cleanest initiation of play, but they are moving. Abrams gets it, he's gone again. Shooter's got to shoot, but not in the direction of Orlovsky's. He goes the other way, gets Ochinski. Now Abeltinch. Orlovsky's again behind the disc. Abeltinch. Underneath now Ochinski. Ochinski breaks far sideline. That's Pilates. He goes back to Abeltinch and now Orlovsky's. Abeltinch. Demare, he shoots for goal, not quite in. On the doorstep though, De Ritter goes wide and back to Demare. Now really wide to Abeltinch, far side. Orlovsky's and they are staying patient in front of this end zone. Abeltinch, Orlovsky's shot for goal, that one counts. They're back on the board. Another break. This one could be slipping away early if Clapham can't compose themselves. I'm going to make a bold call, Stefan. I don't see Clapham coming back into this game. At the moment, the people on both sides of the field, it's not just Clapham, also some unusual errors from players who've been absolutely nailing it all tournament long so far for Moon as well. At the moment, the, some of the key personnel for both sides are just having a bit of a fluffy one here. They're not really executing their throws with the same prowess we normally see. Things are bobbling out of hands. Certainly a rare error from Bateman's earlier on in this game where he just spooned one on the end zone line. Right. But it seems like at the moment, with a bigger roster, the moon catchers, some of their other players are able to rise to the occasion and are having a much better day at the office. But uh, I definitely think Clapham can make this a compelling game to watch. They can make it tight. They can use this. I mean, this is elite invite. It's early stages in the season. This is no misery stage to be in a final against moon catchers and to have a squad that's maybe missing a few key pieces and so maybe some more chinks in the armor being exploited by moon catchers. But one of the things that this is a real opportunity to is to work on the mentality to kind of reset the clock in your head and say, you know what, nil, nil, game to one, let's go do our thing. Because actually in previous games we've seen on live streams where Clapham have been down, they have been up against the wall, they've just fallen apart. So this is how you get better at not falling apart. One more time, one more kick at the can. They are down. We hope they are not out. But if you're Pierre-Alain Delamine, you must be absolutely pleased to see such conservatism and trust. Trust is a key word for the offense on Moon on this game. Just not getting too hungry when they have the disc in hand. This is Clapham.
This is the club that has won so consistently on European soil. As far down as they may be, they cannot be counted out. Hillman to Mead. Playing in their own end zone. Some changes of personnel and that one goes through the hands of Butt. A high throw there from Tyler East. Yeah, youngest player on the squad for Clapham, only 18 years old. Ref Yonkers looking to break again. Ref gets again, that one in. They are breaking hearts. Messmaker with that goal. The Clapham ship is sinking and Moon are putting their imprint on it. <laughs> oh, the celebration from Yonkers there is fantastic. Oh, bonkers, the younger, smacking his head with his palm. And again, Clapham, you just gotta you know, take this one on the chin, come out a little bit stronger. That was another throwing error, just a bit too high for Butt to reel in. One of the big matchups for Clapham when they're coming out on defense, of course, tasked with marking some of the big personnel. But that's a lovely inside shot. Messmaker with uh, a little bit of acreage given to him in the front of the end zone. No timeouts called though. Just a little bit of a long one between points. And again, that wind, it keeps breezing here. The Clapham were wishing for some wind to take away some of the precision of of maybe the, the big risky throws that the moon catchers like. We haven't seen many of the big risky throws and they're they're finding other ways to do it. Well, they definitely have the, uh, <laughs> the chops to throw hammers, blades and scubas and all kinds of other fun magic throws in the wind. The execution, it's like they're, you know, it's like a, it's a utility throw for them. It's not anything too super special. But again, we know that they were a bit hot headed in the early stages of this tournament. There hasn't been maybe as much noise from the sideline as there have been in the previous games, but at the moment, uh, Mooncatchers are not being asked to work that hard all the time. Although I say that, Dan Murray has been putting an absolute shift marking the likes of Conor McHale. Knapp goes to ground, picks up the pull. Straight to Hillman and McHale gets the opening gainer. He winds up and he's overshot and ooh, Orlovsky's almost knocked it back to Wilson. But smacks it away for a D. Orlovsky's another break opportunity and a awkward landing there for Hokey. Oh, hopefully he'll be okay. I think it's just gonna take the hand back up and hobble off the pitch. Nicola Hokey is indeed one of the players that's been uh, on the money a lot of the time for Moon Catchers this tournament. And one of the players we don't really say too much about, Brussels man, by birthright, as it were. Currently residing there and from there and started with Vinci Sharks, a school team for four years. He's been playing since he was eight years old. He doesn't even remember why he keeps playing, just because he loves the game so much. We understand that. We get a fair bit of love for this game ourselves. Disc is back in after the injury replacement, sees DeLuca with the disc in his hands. Not a bad replacement to so put on your conversion line. Orlovsky shoots deep. Demaray spins around once and twice, finds the disc. Ochinski gives him something to engage. Stall count mounting, and he goes super dump. That I mean, which is now to De Luca, Vandenbroek. Looking with a wide step there, goes around, gets the backhand he was begging for to Vanny. He zips inside, nobody home, but there could be a catch up, and there is. De Ritter to Demaray. Timeout called. Moon catchers get a chance to set up an end zone set. Yep. Absolute right decision. You know, this is a uh, good opportunity to practice that conservative offense. 
But really a uh, bit of a get out of jail free on that one that just floated out and run down by Jarida. Best way out of jail is the freeway out of jail. They're going to take a break. We'll take one, two, and we'll be right back with you after this timeout. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. My mom and I made a cookbook. Traditional recipes passed down through the generations. They cater very well to modern kitchens. Our recipes come from all over Italy, primarily from Le Marche in Sicily, where my parents come from. Two of the best culinary regions. All the regions of Italy have their own signature food. Buying this book will make you smarter and better looking. Mannaggia Stefano. Just promote the book. Just search Mama's Italian Classics anywhere you can buy books online. And get your hands on a copy. Well, Back after the break. What a handsome fella that was. Oh, stop it, Hannah. And, and, what, a, and what a lovely mother. Yes, she is. That I'll let you talk about all, all day long, any day. My mother is a lovely human. Favorite recipe from that book? Oh, goodness. That is a difficult question. I mean, lasagna, the, the lasagna comes as a three-stage recipe. We got the pasta recipe, the bolognese recipe, and then the construction of... Uh, I, I really like the simple stuff too, the pasta al olio, our pestos, we get some great stuff in there. So yeah, get your hands on it. Classic lasagna. Well, a classic timeout call in front of the end zone. Is it going to be a turnout? Is it going to be, uh, or time over? As depending on your preferred phraseology, but the most difficult throw from Static against this wind. We've seen some air bouncy backhands actually with the wind. So what's Stan de Murray going to choose? Well, he's the right man for the job. He's been hot today. He just goes with the wide swing to Vanny and then to Ochinski. Ochinski goes to Arlovski's. Straight in for goal, not quite. On the doorstep. The next one goes in. That's DeRitter with the assist to Vanny for the goal. And another one on the board. Another break for the moon catchers. Well, Vanny with the sun hat, keeping himself cool, calm and collected are words though I would use for this moon catcher squad right now. We are one away from half time. The obviously points cap of eight for the first half. Regulation 80 minute long games here at the Elite Invite. And at the moment, I have to say, moon catchers are pulling some magic that's making Clapham look dare I say it, a little bit amateurist, not so much elite. It, it, you may well dare say they are not looking like they're underperforming. They are looking like they have, are nowhere in sight right now. They have, Their game plan has evaded them. Their confidence lost, heads dropping, top performers underperforming, looking to use a bit more depth, change up the line, call on their rookies uh, and some of their younger players to step up here but, but barely room to get them in it's a weird one because actually it's a very british phenomena to not be able to get yourselves into a game at the beginning it's been an, a kind of weird rhythm of this tournament for the open division three games on day one two games yesterday for the championship brackets the quarters and semis and only the one game here so maybe you know not quite enough Commitment to warming yourselves up, coming a little bit flat into this game perhaps, but again, a couple of personnel errors, but oh, that came down like a rocket into the chest of Abrams. Eels to Mead. Martin, it was about to float, and Martin throws into the foot of Bontemps. I love that so much. Sophie and Bontemps. Ah. Everything is going right for the moon catchers. They cannot put a foot wrong. Abeltinch to Vandenbroek. Vandenbroek, ooh, high, but no problem for Demaray. Looks to break, does it on the backhand to Abeltinch. Demaray, great shake move to get clear of Hillman for some space. Now Abeltinch. Oh, and he just gets through, and the shot does too. 
Bon Tomp with another goal, and this run continues and takes us into the half. Oh, well, my, my heart goes out to Felix Martin, the former Warwick Bear. And of course, Warwick Bears, we no longer say so much about them as we used to back in the club scene when they were an amazing mixed team. But uh, he had a window of opportunity on that defensive bit after getting foot blocked by Sophie and Bonton. The shot that's a laser through that almost, you could see, you know, he was, you could get a whiff of that disc. You could smell it, the edge on it. But unfortunately, the throw from Abeltinch is just too good for there to be the ability to snag that one out of the air. So let's have a look at the shape of this game in terms of the stats board, Stefan. The stats board has a lot of color on the side of the moon catches. Bon Tomp, of course, two goals and an assist to match his block. Demaray, a goal, assist and a block. Those two obviously anchoring a, a big part of this D-line that is, well, let's face it, they've been on the field the whole game. Uh, if you're running breaks like this, you got your O-line on the shelf, and they're pretty happy to be there, I hope, because when the D-line gets rolling, just let them roll. Uh, that is how you implement your specialty into this game, and sure, if you get close to the end, maybe get the O-line in to play a point or two of D, but right now, just let them roll. What I really want is a game of two halves, a classic, because this half has been very demoralizing for Clapham fans to watch. Let's hope they can uh, bring it back for the second. Although the one thing I do want to highlight, the one clean hold, the only score that Clapham have achieved so far this game, it took them 23 passes to do it. So nothing coming easy here today for Clapham. And it is going to be a long second half. Well, it'll probably be a pretty short second half if they can't get things together. It will feel quite long for them out there, though. Uh, if it is a legitimate long second half and they can find some energy, the energy they're at least showing in their huddle right now, then maybe we will have a spectacle on our hands. Well, we did see actually. Would you like to know a fun, a fun fact as we have a look at the parachute on the far side of the field, the uh, paragliding action. So some of the players that heard that Clapham had made the final were looking at booking flights to, to get themselves here. Some are at home resting, having a well-deserved week off because it's a really busy season. Of course, so much of Clapham is on the GB open roster that we'll see in UC later on this season but some of them were at a wedding and uh, they were they were looking, do I want to spend 450 British sterling pounds on a flight to Switzerland Sunday morning? No, our guys got it covered. I respect the commitment of keeping the original squad that's got you through the championship bracket to this final, but uh, there's zero bias here. I just want a better game for you know, you know make it make it more compelling, make it more tight. I'm, I'm in my head. I'm resetting. The score is nil nil. Let's uh, let's let's see it as a half. We're gonna if have you to. Will, but we're gonna have to talk about that so we can see how this game is tracking through the second half with the uh, the seven point clear as you get a little bit of a shot of Olofskis there. And uh, I mean. Clap them over the years, yes, but yesterday, just yesterday, they put on a heck of a performance against the Italians. It is there, whole team or not, the Clapham members here. We talk about it, that if you have a closer game coming into a really meaningful game, does that warm you up? Having at that points difference over uh, La Fota, was it making them a little bit Man, over ambitious? Who knows? Walked in too easily, perhaps. Ben Yonkers fakes the deep. Players slipping on the field, recollect. Ochinski to De Luca, immediately to Ref Yonkers. He whips one to Hootenin. They're in the attacking zone already. Well, what this definitely sets up for later season games, Stefan, is uh, some revenge from a full fat Clapham squad. Well, that's what they'll have on their minds. If this one continues out the way it has been going, what a shock to see Clapham playing this way, but Mooncatchers doing everything they can to make it look like their own prowess, creating the difference. Toluca goes down to ground, shoots to the middle, Ben Yonkers. 
Looking for the corner, gets it, but not in yet. Merrick back to Feller and Ben Yonkers. Fakes to Hootenin, puts the hand out to apologize for the no throw. Then to Feller again on the doorstep. DeLuca's there, feet down again. Another goal to open the second half for the Moon. And again, all of the offensive holes that have been clean in this game have high pass tallies. That was 19 completions required to go the full stretch for Moon Catchers, but that is better defense. The pressure that Clapham were able to put on, I mean, didn't get themselves a turn, but that is how you generate turns against teams at the elite level. You have to go metal for metal, touch for touch, and be on contesting every pass you can see the disappointment there from the head of Tyler East who throws himself back that's a breakside shot if I my memory is corrected but that was really great patience from Moon I have to shout out uh, Josh Eels Salty coming across I, I'm gonna check myself before I wet myself but I think he's a former Devon player or as a uh, Dev then Chev then Clapham is uh, the, the note from Benji Rees. But of course, to give them their formal title, the sexy Devon Fish Monsters. And even saw him playing with Goyota in WCC last season. Bounced around a little bit, as most ultimate players do. There's few that stay very, very loyal. Same club throughout their illustrious careers, but many get the pleasure of learning all the other, learning many different team cultures. McHale to Knapp. Ooh, and a foot on that, but a completion to go with it. Mead winds up. Bogan Carey can't get in front of Orlovsky's. That's twice they've hucked to him. Same result both times. Bon top now with the disc. He's shot deep. Orlovsky's is there. He's going to milk it in. Another break. 10-1, Mooncatchers. Double digit scoreline for the Brussels chaps, plus a couple of extra friends. It's a shame that diff the difficulty rating on the throw from me that didn't quite manage to arc round Olovskis is pretty high. Let's get another look at this one. You have to remind you, you cannot feel the wind conditions, but if you want to set yourself up something to to kind of you know, <laughs> mimic the fields, get yourself a really big fan, put it directly behind the screen that you're watching us commentate on and have it blow directly into your face. It's a true crosswind. So that backhand from Mead is having to really fight against the wind and he does have the arm to do it, but it just makes that much more challenging throw to complete. And Ty Bogan Carey is a fantastic receiver, but even he can't put himself through Arvid Olovskis. That's it, uh, you know, that with, with the tough conditions and the tough defender to throw against, uh, these decisions and mechanics not working out at all for Clapham right now. Well, we saw in the semi-final, the defense really pushed Clapham to take risky options. This is a much more kind of soft style of defense. They're not really clamping down around the back set as much. They are pressuring the handlers, but it just seems like they're taking higher, well, sorry, lower percentage completion options than they need to. Magnus Wilson, his first touch of the game. Oh goodness, Bakemans was there with bidding to steal it again. Nap. Goes widen around and Clapham playing backwards for a moment. Wilson to Hillman. Abrams gets Mead roaring under with space. Mead goes deep. McInerney there can't get a hand to it. Light the cut from McInerney, but again, it's not on all cylinders at the moment for Clapham. Just take a slightly more conservative option, have another reset. You know, that's gonna unlock the key. They were doing so well in moving up the field slowly, gradually, keeping the heads level. That if they were having a better day, also shout out to Con McHale for looking 0% flustered by Bateman's huge bid. But this one is one of those, ones, when you're on form, when it's all flowing, that's a goal for days. But the moment Clapham, not quite there. It's a little shaky. Just be McHale. calmer. 
Mikhail was open for the under there too when the shot went up. Appletinch and the Mooncatchers looking to have their one millionth break in a row. <laughs> Vandenbroek <laughs> looked off Bontemp with the disc. Now Deles to Bontemp. Far sideline, stall count mounts. Puts the throw, finds a wide open Vandebroek. He throws to goal. There's an open receiver. There's another break. Then he puts this one in and a 10 point lead with only 11 on the board. Well, <laughs> Vanny is a yeah, big part of the break train for the moon catchers, which is appropriate because he's a project manager for the Belgian train company. <laughs> but that was a fantastic throw. Again, we talk about having to throw against this wind. It's coming pretty much straight directly across. So it looks like such an easy release, but the finesse to hit that back corner so perfectly. A thing of beauty. An oil painting of a backhand. This was nobody's expectations. Looks like we've got ourselves a timeout on the field. Well, much needed because it's triple ones, which are nearly the emergency num services number well, for yeah, the Central they might Europe. Need to make that call from their huddle over there. Either way, we're going to take a short break too. We'll be right back after the timeout. Always on the move? You can keep up to date with Ulti TV on all of our social media channels. Like, follow, subscribe, share us with a friend, or send us a message just to say hey. Thank you for supporting us in our mission to grow ultimate everywhere. from Nottingham, England, the World Flying Disc Federation's World Under-24 Ultimate Championships. Live all-access coverage, including semis and finals, exclusively at ultiworld.com. We are back. Moon catchers are back and to be determined if Clapham will be back in this one. Well, I hope so, Stefan, because they have been a quality side in this tournament and they're not really doing themselves justice here. Eelzy goes to Martin behind the disc. Bogan carry too far and another early possession turn. Dan Demeray picks up with another chance to break. He actually walks away and lets Orlovsky's. Well, you know, you've got to spread the love around. And if you recall from our earlier stream game of Moon against Wall City, Orlovsky's had his uh, catching license taken away. Well, that has been renewed. Orlovsky's. Oh, and Eel steals one from Orlovsky's. Clap him. Steadying the ship. Not necessarily the grand plan, just getting one on the board. Arlovsky's bids on the fake. Well, you say steadying the ship. I think Eelzy is just putting his, <laughs> the Clapham on his back. Eelzy goes deep. Hillman can't make the play just about, but that's another turn. I, I don't mind that one, <laughs> to be honest. Josh Eels creating the opportunity back for Clapham. Great peel off an attack of that disc in the center of the end zone. 
And the uh, the new shorts from Zoo for Clapham really do show off the power in the legs of the Clapham athletes. Uh, unfortunate one for Hillman not to quite clutch. Of course, immediately yep, going on to the uh, O-line for Clapham. A little bit of a late spot for him. Demaray dumps back in his own end zone to the big Latvian Arvids Orlovskis. Orlovsky shoots and Demare handles it as he's been doing all game long. Speaking of which, there's Bon Tomp, who's been doing it from start till now and until I said it. Squires now. A few mistakes out of the moon catchers. Will this be enough to give a sniff? Bogan Carey with the inside backhand break. Squires now zips it up to Martin. Martin, far sideline. Stoppage on the field. You know what we see currently on the field for Clapham, Stefan? It's all the latest outfit of this club. Pretty much the full seven are not the long-standing players who've been with Clapham for forever. And mm. I like that energy for them. Just bring out. Bring out the young lads. Let's see if they can cash one in, especially that might be what they need. They may spark the old guard by showing them we can do this. Why can't you? Eels now with the disc. Eels goes inside to Martin. He has a bobble of it, but decides to hang on. Goes wide around, but bobbles, and he cannot <laughs> hang on. And another opportunity squandered. One of the first real scoring opportunities, though, at it. Oh, the cruel win. My heart has jumped up into my throat. I've got to shove it back down, Steph. Oh, that one I could have had it just about into the commentary booth. But it goes away, and Clapham will get another chance. Fantastic defense there from Felix Martin, squeezing Damare to this near sideline with the wind trailing the disc, too. A little bit of help and hindrance at times. Squires picks up the disc, gets five, seven meters from where it would have went out. And he inbounds it to Eels. Eels looks to go around, defense was there. Eels, had, now he's gonna shoot it up. Bogan Carey, Orlovsky's in the neighborhood. Bogan Carey hangs on this time. They are on the board, only nine away now. <laughs> I'm gonna give a little shout out. I am surprised that Clapham didn't celebrate that a little bit harder because I think Rachel Naden just celebrated it on behalf of them all more enthusiastically. But no, that was a really good idea. Just throw stuff at the wall until you find something that works and bringing out the young guns for Clapham worked that was a much higher energy point it's got that little bit of swagger and you've got nothing to lose lads that seemed to be how they played that point like they had nothing left to lose well which realistically don't. yeah exactly that is <laughs> you're the, 11 12 11 2 down that's the long and short of it right now you might as well go out there and run the old spaghetti offense and just let anybody go anywhere and see if that works but they have found a way to, to put a goal on they can put their d line on the field Maybe the Moon O-line that hasn't been on the field all game long are cold for being on the shelf. That's something that the Moon the Clapham would hope for, but I have my doubts. I know Hannah does too. Nah, Pierre Adam de la Mine is too much a wily coach for that kind of nonsense. I'm sure the lads will have been keeping themselves warm on the sidelines, maybe a bit of thrown with each other and being active and getting involved in this game, but heck, that's, po that's point number one. Can Clapham snag themselves any breaks in this game? As much as they've been shelved as an entire O-line, they have been all implemented and playing D and periodic points. They are not cold. Here they come. Ref Yonkers to De Luca. Oh, and a zone defense from Clapham. We love to see the change of pace. Got to give it a try. You got to give it a try. You can't, go, you can't lose a game without trying a zone. De Luca. And I mean, the weather for his own is, is there. Ref Yonkers with the disc goes to brother Ben. And a silent transition, love the silent transition. Doesn't generate a turn yet. 
Be ref Yonkers to Ben Yonkers. Merrick. The check pickup for the season. DeLuca keeps his toe. It's a really quiet sideline from Clapham, Steph. It is indeed. While they play D, ref Yonkers shoots too high. Second asking, Uchinski takes it down. Hootenin goes to Ben Yonkers. He goes for goal, not quite. But ref zips the next one to Feller, and that counts. 12-2, the score line. I do not mind that point if I'm running the show for the coaching of Clapham. That was, there were some moments you could see Tom Abrams at the end of that point, really try, like desperate to create an opportunity, forcing Moon to play at the edges of their offense. I think you make your own luck. And certainly, you know, when you're this far up in a game, making the recatch on that high bobbly one, you're gonna do that every day because you're just, you're in control of this game. And that's what Moon Catchers have managed to do from the start, they are really controlling the pace. And now Clapham are trying to change that, change the look. I like putting on a little bit of zone. See if you can, you know, cause a bit of confusion, get a misstep out of the O-line. But uh, Moon are looking very good right now. They might be the Moon catchers, but the sun seems to be almost super powering them out here in Bern. Perhaps they've uh, secretly got some kryptonite not Kryptonite, secretly from Krypton, because of course the Earth's yellow sun is what gives Superman his powers. Just to be a good little nerdy reference in there. But I've got a little bit of hope now for Clapham. Is it there? Do they share that same hope? And oh. do you watching have it? Do you have hope? Those at home, let us know in the comments. Is there a chance here for Clapham to mount a comeback? Or is this one all over but the crying? Bogan Carey gets to Squire's fast hand there to collect. McInerney, and they're using it, jamming up the sideline. They go to Squire's again. Squire's looks to center and then shovel pass. Squire's gets again wide side. Knapp can get there. Still not in. Changes hands, toe drag. There's another one on the board. Clapham with two holds in a row. That's much more like it. Conservative options, just nice and clean. There was a little bit of uh, spice on that last throw. Fantastic grab from Knapp to keep possession alive. But again, you've got some of the youngsters out, especially working in the handler set. That wasn't the cleanest execution, but uh, some spice and great footwork from Hillman the Younger, of course. His former team, Deep Space, also present at this tournament and done pretty well. Deep Space did pretty well, not quite into the final. But, but uh, uh, lost a very tight one in the mixed semi. Disconnection got in on Universe Point. Yeah, and that, that one under the uh, watchful eye of the VO Auto stream, which will be re-uploaded later if you do not have the app installed. Of course, after this, we've got the next two divisions. It's finals day here, women's next. Mixed after that. Make sure you are locked in for the next couple hours here. Four or five hours of ultimate still coming your way. So this isn't an impossibility for Clapham, but... I've seen Clapham score 12 points in a row. I've seen Clapham score 12 points in a row at an elite invite. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. They've done it before. Now's the time, though, as we start to run down the clock. 20 minutes left of regulation time. But I've seen Clapham score 12 in a row at an elite invite when the scoreline was 12-3. Feller here goes to Yonkers. Feller to Deles. Feller goes around, Yonkers to Yonkers, and that combination again. DeLuca now, far sideline. DeLuca gets Ben Yonkers now, meters away. Ben Yonkers shovels in, and another one on the board. 
Feller collects that one. That's the 13th. <laughs> I love a bit of airplane action celebration there. Well deserved, though. I mean, bonkers throwing that flat as a pizza servery around Flick. Like, like what wind? There's wind on this pitch? We are seeing the impact in terms of the throw choices, the selections from moon catchers. They aren't throwing those big overheads. They aren't throwing the bombs so much. We're seeing less action from Dan de Marais in the end zone. I'm not mad because I quite enjoy this really smooth, calm offense. But moon catchers are just having a ball there. Just, just enjoying the moment, enjoying the sunshine, enjoying the fact that they've claimed themselves a berth at the European Championship finals, regardless of what happens in the rest of the season. We'll see them in Wrocław. They can benefit from booking their flights nice and early, snagging a bargain. Get the good flights, get in early. To the victors go the spoils of good deals and early logistical planning. But yeah, high pass times. I have to actually correct myself. In the half time I said that Clapham's clean hold took 23 passes. I was incorrect. It was 14, but 23 passes, 19 passes, 22 and 17 required for the O-liner of moon catchers to put in those clean offensive holds. They haven't been broken on their O-line or even turned once. Eels goes to Knapp. Knapp gets it up to Martin. Knapp takes a step, gets some space. Eels with the under. Vandenbroek on his hip. Mead cuts it back into the middle for McHale. And quickly moved now. Great bid by Sofian Bontemp to get the D. Never stand still when you're playing against elite teams. Don't stand still and wait for the disc. Abeltinch, too high for Demaray and knocked away by Eels. A cleated toe there by the looks of things. Bakemans looks like he got stepped on. I'll tell you what, who's awake and lively this morning. It's salty. Well, it's afternoon now. We've, we've actually caught quarter past 12 local times. So the sun is beating down. We are in the, the sun burning hours. But uh, yeah, Josh Eels. That's the second peel off bid to get the disc back for Clapham. McHale to Mead. Now Nap. McHale gives and goes, gets again. Mead now with the disc. McHale goes for goal, but looked away as that one wisely centered to McInerney. And 10, Demaray shuts the door with the left foot. Well, now, now it's McInerney's game, not game, day. Well, they give it right back. Yes, that was that was a curious one, but uh, hopefully we can get some redemption in McInerney. I was trying to say this is uh, not his point. That's, uh, and the wind picks right up to make his first throw even more difficult than it otherwise would be. Of course, McInerney is a well-decorated athlete. He's a career highlight beating Amherst on their own home pitch. Amherst, one of the homelands of this game. McHale goes to Knapp. Ah, wind up, that one is sent. Abrams the target, three white shirts there on the defense. And it's the biggest of them all, Orlovsky's who cleans up the mess. I do like the uh, Josh Eels playing the garbage collection though at the back of the pack, just waiting to see if the big men don't make it. Huge ripper for McInerney though. And just gets a little bit too much from uh, the foot of Sophie Bonneton, I think. So, a couple turnovers in this point. One of the first big multi turn points of the game. Clap him. Oh! My goodness, Vandenbroek was throwing his body around again. 
And this time it's Eels that gets caught sleeping. Just, again, you really cannot stand still and slow down for the disc, but a timeout's going to be called. We're going to take things really slow and stand around on the pitch for a little while and talk to each other about what's going right and wrong. But we'll be back with the action of this second half after these messages. Well, we've had a sugar injection in our booth here. Stefan Rapazzo enjoying the uh, nutrition being provided by the excellent tournament staff here in Bern. Of course, Flying Angels, the hosts of the Elite Invite this season. And they've put on uh, beautiful fields. It's like a, almost like a 70s shag pile carpet, this lovely green grass underneath. There's perfect conditions for laying out. A little bit firm, if anything. But lovely drone shots there. Vandenberg's been testing the landing a fair few times, <laughs> including that last one. He doesn't seem to mind the uh, soft, lush Swiss grass. Yeah, we were talking about him this morning, actually, as we were leaving our accommodation. Of course, the, the local tournament accommodation is the Bunker Nuclear Chic which is a, a brief stroll away from the fields here. But yeah, Vandenbroek is somebody we were um, expecting big things off in this game and he has not disappointed. And Demaray he, going to Orlovskis. Orlovskis straight back around to Demaray. Abeltinch goes back to his Latvian compatriot. Orlovskis and the lay in front McInerney takes it away from Vandenbroek. Vandenbroek calls foul and McInerney is not having it. See if we get another look. McInerney doesn't like it. Vandenbroek pleading his case. Here's the shot. That were, uh, as, as the players surround us and say the word clean repeatedly, I can't help but agree. What a fantastic play from Ian McInerney. Good spirit out of the moon catchers. There, it's an easy place to be very spirited with a 10 point lead, as it should always be a, an easy place to be very spirited, but let's well, face it. But that, that is what makes great spirit, in my opinion, Stefan, when it's not easy to be well spirited. It's not easy to be calm and level headed. That one goes over the pat, but it's nearly redeemed. And the moon catchers can put their 14th point on the board in break fashion, which they have got very used to over the course of this game breaking as seemed like a regular hold for them by sheer force of doing it as consistently as they've done. Wow, what a pickup by Demaray there. Quick hands to snatch that one away from the turf. Demaray shovels back in for goal. It's Abeltinch on the assist and Bakemans collects the goal for the moon. And you can see the celebration for Mooncatchers. We have our first match point opportunity and the form that Moon have found. I would back them. That's another break to add to their tally. I'd back them to take this one on defense, Stefan. They've been pretty good at <laughs> scoring goals while playing defense. We can say that much. But to credit Clapham, 
they are now starting to, you know, they've got their head back above the waterline just about. Maybe sort of their nostrils are poking out of the water, giving them a bit of oxygen. Again, we could have got a little look on the highlight reel of that point of the uh, McInerney defensive bid on the underneath, besting Gaten van den Broek. But at the moment, Mooncatch is still with very much both hands firmly on this game and just behind that end zone where they scored those are what they're going to have their hands firmly on later this afternoon a fantastic golden trophy and of course those all important two gold discs that will allow the entry into Wrocław later on this year they'll look at uh, captain talisman ref Yonkers having a chat with our very own Charlotte Terrasson yeah, They're, any. Uh, lapping it up this one, uh, getting ready for celebrations. Maybe not ahead of themselves, I wouldn't imagine, but uh, they, at, they see the light at the end of this tunnel. At this point, if you're Pierre Alain de la Mine, you can open yourself up a celebratory can of beer, I think. I still say no. It ain't over till it's over. This one looks good. It's a downhill. It's a no, slippery slope. no, no, no. Closing down Moon that long with only seven minutes left of regulation time ain't going to happen. But it could be a heck of a show while we get there. Nonetheless, lovely low catch from Davies. As he... There goes the turn. Bogan carry. This could be championship points in break fashion if they put one more in here. Ableton. Gets Merrick. Who will be... The goal scoring hero to end it. Bon Tomps cashes it in. It's the 31 shirt of Deritter, the game winning goal. And that was a downhill steamrolling for Mooncatcher over Clapham. I'm not surprised. I am disappointed for Clapham. They were starting to, you know, generate a little bit of electricity towards the end of this first half. Those long grindy points, though, they actually... Hold on. I'm going to check. So how many defensive points did Clapham have? One, two, three, four. Four the whole game. So really a difficult opportunity. My heart goes out to them, but at the end of the day, this is not full Clapham. They've got lots of lessons they can learn. This is how you get your squad better, those games. Sometimes you do feel shut out, but towards the later stages, they were tussling, they were in it, but by that point, it's too late. You didn't set your alarm clock. You didn't turn up early enough in this game to really challenge Moon, who've got such a talented roster. That extra depth, they've got six more players than you. They've got so much more of the world squad from last season a couple of new additions amongst the fold and a fantastic non-playing coach we don't talk enough about the advantage of having that extra bit of objectivity someone who's he's not even cleated up so a deserved win to moon they were on form and at the end of the day it was never clapham's game to win but what a final to watch nonetheless. Some fantastic displays. It's a difficult one to pick for Moon. Who's your player of the match? Well, I think it's the same one that our very own Charlotte Terrasson. I mean, Dan Demeray is uh, my second choice, but I think it was Sofiane Bontemps who had the strongest game out here. Uh, statistically, you have a look two goals, three assists, and two body flying blocks for Sofiane Bontemps, the under, 20, uh, under 24 player. You have a look at the team stats on the board now, just before we throw to Charlotte, but uh, wow, look at that tail of the tape. Turnovers, Hannah. Of your 15 points, eight clean breaks pretty sure most of those came from the first section of the game in fact towards the later stages until that last point Clapper made them work a lot harder for it but yeah it was just their game of the day big shout out also for Moon for the number 42 Bryce Fanet three goals for him but we're going to go to an interview very shortly Charlotte Terrasson with Sophie Bonton himself the man of the match for Stefan Rapazzo Charlotte over to you 
What a game, what a landslide victory from Mooncatchers here, taking victory over Clapham to gold for the Elite Invite 2023. I'm here with Sofian Bonton, who had a heck of a game himself with stats skyrocketing, two goals, three assists, and two blocks, and also throwing the seeds for the win of this game. Sofian, tell me, how does it feel? Woohoo! Attacked by a flag. <laughs> we got some issues. Yeah. How does it feel to win? How is the team feeling? What do you feel? It's feeling really good because uh, two weeks ago we uh, we the Mooncatcher won Tom's tourney and uh, the U24 was were not part of uh, this game, so uh, we wanted to uh, to win a big tournament with the Moon. So uh, the team is really feeling great now. Uh, yesterday was. Uh, my birthday, we won the ticket for UCF and uh, today we wanted to improve and just won this tournament and we did uh, pretty well, 15-3 uh, yeah, and yeah, I think the team is feeling really good now. Amazing, yes, it's birthday boy from yesterday, best birthday gift ever possible. Indeed, Mooncatch has already won the Tom's tourney, now Elite Invite, what a season! And uh, what are your goals now? I mean, UCF, obviously, how do you prepare for that? How do you feel about that? Uh, we have uh, the windmill in two weeks. Uh, we want to be more prepared than last year and do the final again and win this time. Not finish second with a not nice game against uh, Clapham. So yeah, I think the objective now I, are windmill, win it or just do the best and yeah after uh, the UCF in uh, Wroclaw in uh, October. So. Awesome, so stay tuned, you want to keep following this team going places, Mooncatchers from Brussels for gold here in Bern Elite Invite 2023 and stay also tuned to follow these players, most of them playing national teams in Limerick and Nottingham this summer. Thank you very much Sofian, go have fun Thanks. with your team, enjoy! And thank you all for following, stay with us for the next finals coming up soon. Thanks. 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 Yeah, ultimate.
www.ghostbusters.tv.